Hi and welcome to Introduction to Linguistics. Hola y bienvenidos a Introducción a la Lingüística. My name is Rolando and I'm very happy that we're going to be working together this quarter. Mainly because I love this class. Back when I took Introduction to Linguistics, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with finding patterns in different languages, with solving all these puzzles, and maybe you will too. Maybe you will relive an old love where you like learning foreign languages or making secret codes with your friends. We're going to be looking at all of those, but mainly we're going to be looking at patterns, at how to find patterns within languages and how to find commonalities across languages. There's more than 7,000 languages in the world, and they look very different. However, there's deep similarities running through them. For example, with words like subject, verbs, and object, there's only really a few ways that you can arrange them. And languages in the world are arranged in only these six ways. For example, in English, we have to say, I love New York. In Japanese, you would have to say, I, New York, love. And in the language Hishkariana from Brazil, you would have to say, New York, I, love. And every language in the world can be explained with one of these patterns. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of structure that lies underneath the surface of language. For example, if you see a sentence, it looks like a linear structure where words come one after the other. However, we're going to learn how sentences actually have a hierarchical structure underneath, a structure that looks a little bit like a tree. And sentences can have different tree structures, and because of this, they can have more than one meaning, even if they have the same word. For example, in the chicken is ready to eat, that sentence can mean two things, the one on the left, the one on the right. And we'll study what the structural differences between these two. It's also interesting to see that we'll look at the um, relationship between structure and meaning because they don't always come together. You can have something that has a perfectly good English structure with no meaning, like colorless green ideas sleep furiously. A sentence that is perfect, except that it means nothing. We will also look at how language, human language, interacts with human societies. We'll look at how the places where you grow up and the people you have met in your life have an influence in your language, but also how you project your persona onto the words that you say and how you speak your language. For example, one tiny example is, if you grew up in the US, try to find where you grew up and then see if the word in the map corresponds to how you say a sweetened carbonated beverage. If you grew up in a red area, um, you should have the word soda for that concept. If you grew up here in a blue area, you should have pop. And if you grew up here, you should have Coke. The places where you grew up have an influence on how you speak language. We'll study that, and we will also study how unfortunately people use those differences in how people speak, how they say some words, to discriminate one against the other. There's discrimination because of the languages that you speak, because of how you say things, and we will study how those patterns work in order to combat them. This is a rough sketch of what we'll study this quarter. First, we'll look at what linguistics is, and of course, at what it isn't. Spoiler alert, we are not the language police. We're here to describe language, not to tell people how they should be speaking. On week two, we'll look at the smallest components of language, sounds, as they happen in your mouth, or hand shapes, as they come from your hands when you're speaking a sign language. These small components are called sounds or phones, and their study is Phonetics. Phonetics happens in your mouth or on your hands. On week three, we'll study phonology, which is the study of how sounds work in your brain. Phonetics happens in your mouth or your hands. Phonology happens in your brain. On week four, we'll study how those components come into units that have meaning, and those units are called morphemes. For example, the word cats has two morphemes. Or meaning units. Cat, which is the name of the animal, and the S, which tells you that there's more than one cat. These are two morphemes, cats, and we'll study them in morphology. On week five, 
we will study the order of sentences, which we call syntax. And in week six, we'll study uh, the meaning of words, semantics, and also how language works in context, which is called pragmatics. It's the difference between saying, I love this class and I love this class. So in both sentences, we have the exact same words, but they mean completely opposite things. That's pragmatics. We'll also study a little bit of how children learn human languages. On week seven, we'll study language diversity and language revitalization, which is how indigenous communities have worked really hard to make their languages thrive after many problems over the centuries. On week eight, we'll study how languages change. Remember how you invented new words with your friends in high school and sometimes you pronounce things a little bit differently? All of those changes accrete and add up until 2000 years later, you have Latin and Spanish and French, for example. Your changes in how you say words eventually make whole languages change. On week nine, we'll study sociolinguistics, which is how you project your persona onto how you speak your language. We'll study how people use this to discriminate sometimes against one another. And we'll also study a little bit of computational linguistics because I work with computational linguistics. I'm a computer scientist and a linguist. And I work with how to implement algorithms from natural language processing in indigenous languages. There's going to be one transversal uh, topic throughout our class, which is sign languages, which is they, are, they work in exactly the same way as spoken languages. However, there's many myths about how they work. We're going to be looking at those and analyzing how their structures work. You can call me Rolanda. I am from Costa Rica, and I discovered linguistics because I was working at a high school in an indigenous territory, and they spoke a language called Bribri. And this was something I had never heard about before. I thought it was the strangest and coolest thing in the world, that there was this world I had knew nothing about. After working at that high school, I took intro to linguistics to try to learn more about languages, and that's how I got here. I also studied uh, computer science. So as I told you, I work with computational linguistics. I worked in Costa Rica in the States. I worked in New Zealand for a couple of years. And I started working at Dartmouth in January 2020. So this is my first time teaching in Tokyo. And in the next couple of videos, we will look at the structure of this class and at what linguistics is. Welcome to the class and thank you so much for being here.